Today, I'm gonna to show you how to completely transform your background. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name's Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Check out our sweet new moving graphic below. Zach Spinner has been working hard on it, so give him mad props. <laughs> Today, we're gonna be showing you something really cool in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how to take elements of your background. We're gonna transform them. We're gonna get rid of something completely. We're gonna recolorize, and we're gonna simplify a photo. These are some things that you can do on any of your photographs, and uh, the transformation techniques, they're gonna be marvelous. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here's our image we're working on today, and uh, it's by Ben Scott. I really like this image. It's, uh, it's so simple, it's beautiful. I've got a great dress here. The styling's really done very well, and uh, I think that it really adds having the subject not necessarily looking at the camera. I think it adds to the story. So I think this image does stand alone just as it is. To clear things up, there's not much that needs to be done with this image, but I'm gonna show you guys some things that could be done with this image, and that's a lot of the time that you'll kind of experience um, with your images and things like that. It's not that it's bad now, I'm just gonna show you some things that could make a difference uh, for these images. And what I'm gonna do, just to simplify this even more, we're gonna get rid of all of this and um, I'm gonna make it look like this, uh, the field basically extends all the way through uh, the horizon. So that's our, that's our goal today, that's what we're gonna be doing and uh, you're gonna see it's actually gonna turn out really cool. So let's go ahead and delete that. Now the first thing I wanna do is figure out kinda like where my horizon line is gonna be. And to do that, I'm gonna use guides. And guides are just a way, they don't affect your actual image, they're just a way to kinda of see things. So to get to get your guides up, uh, you can hit Command or Control R, and then, or you can go to View, and then down to Rulers, that's, uh, that's what that is, Rulers. And then I'm gonna click right here on the top and just drag right on down until I get to my horizon, which I'm getting to because of, um, basically through my, um, through the horizon that's over here. So everything above this, I'm gonna kinda of get rid of, and uh, below this, we're gonna, we're gonna kinda of enhance this a little bit more. So we're gonna leave that guide up for a little bit, and uh, it's just a general way to um, kinda of figure out what you wanna do with your image. Don't, you know, you can always get rid of it at any time, which we're gonna be doing in a second. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on my background, I'm just gonna duplicate that by hitting Command J, and what it's gonna do is just make sure that I'm not at all affecting uh, my original layer. Now the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab my lasso tool, just a regular lasso tool, and I'm gonna select out this area right along here, kind of going along the, uh, the line in the background here. There we go, and just right about there. So I'm kind of following the line of the actual, um, the dirt, uh, the dirt line here. <laughs> and uh, Now what we're gonna do again is I'm gonna hit Command J on that. So if you have a selection active and you hit Command J, it's going to duplicate that selection to a new layer. So here we have just what was in that selection, and now it's on a new layer. Pretty cool. Now, I wanna rotate this around because we want that perspective to look like it's shifting all the way to the horizon. So we're gonna do a Command T or Control T, and then we're gonna just zoom in here. I'll show you guys your little control points here. It's always gonna show up in the very middle. Um, we're gonna move that to our horizon. So this control point, we're gonna click on that, and you can see I can kind of move it around here. Um, you can see it better on the dark. That's what it looks like. And we're gonna move it up to the top left there. And basically, uh, this is gonna serve as the point that any kind of transformation I make happens around this point. So when I rotate, it's not gonna rotate around the center of this layer, it's gonna rotate around that point. So what we're gonna do, we've already put that where we want it, and I'm gonna bring my cursor right out over here, and I've got a double arrow. I'm gonna click, and now I can rotate. And you can see it's gonna rotate from that point. Now what we're gonna do is rotate it up right about there. There we go, that looks pretty good and that's gonna be like our new horizon line. So that's why we put the horizon line up there, so I knew about how much I was gonna rotate it there. And now we're gonna hit enter, and uh, there we go. It's basically, um, we just put it up there. So very, very cool. Now, to get this to be a little bit better, obviously we've got a hard line you know, here on the bottom because we just did a, a regular lasso tool. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna make a cool brush real quick, and that's just gonna make this really like a random pattern, so you're not gonna see that hard line that you can see there. Okay, so we're gonna put a layer mask on there. Just click on your layer mask. I'm gonna make a brush, so we're just gonna grab our brush tool. We'll choose a regular soft brush, kind of make it smaller and a little bit harder. Then we're gonna go to window, and then down here to brush. Okay, so the only thing I'm really gonna do with this, let's just bring that down there. Well, actually, I can do a couple fun things. Why not? We're in here, let's have fun. I'm gonna um, make our brush size a little bit different. We're gonna make it, instead of round, we're just gonna make it a little bit oval. We're gonna bring our hardness up, and I'm gonna bring up our scattering, 
and there we go. We're going to scatter these little particles around. And this is just going to make it a lot more random looking, and it's going to make it look like you didn't just do it in Photoshop. Now I'm going to turn my angle jitter up, and this is just going to like kind of rotate these around. And uh, let's turn our minimum diameter down. So we've got something that looks like a bunch of grains of rice. And um, basically the end goal here is if I painted with this on a new layer, you guys could see um, this is what it's going to look like. Here we're in pink. I'll just put it over there. So it would look something like that. And as I continue to paint over and over again, it's just going to look like that. Um, the goal here is to get something that doesn't necessarily look like uh, just a soft, fuzzy brush in Photoshop. Because when you're masking, especially things like dirt and things like that, you can see that soft, fuzzy line. And um, generally, it just it looks like it was done in Photoshop. So now I've, I'm painting with black with, my, uh, with this brush tool. And you can see how things are just kind of starting to like disappear naturally and um, in a nice like even controlled way. All right, we can make our brush a little bit smaller and um, kind of go all the way to a horizon line. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and bring up our flow and then we can just kind of figure out, you know, where are these going to be visible and not visible. There we go. So we get like a little bit, you can actually like see, you know, that pattern there. And if I hold alter option, that's what my uh, that's what my actual layer mask looks like now. So um, it's just a little bit more random, and it doesn't necessarily look um, much like it was just a, like a direct copy. And we don't see that like soft edge, which is um, very useful. Now this brush, I'm actually going to save it, so we're going to use it again here in just a second. So to save this brush, go to Window down here to Brush, and then I'm going to right just click over here where it's uh, the three arrows with a down sign, down arrow, <laughs> and go to New Brush Preset. All right, we're going to call this Dirty dirt. You could just call it dirt if you wanted, but uh, we're calling it dirty dirt. All right. <laughs> now what we're going to do is um, coming from the top down, I'm going to create a new layer on this. We still need to get rid of all this stuff, right? Um, but I'm done with my guide. So what we're going to do, I'm going to grab my move tool. We're going to click here on my guide and just drag it all the way back up to my ruler and then hit command R and then our rulers are gone. Pretty cool. So we're going to use a clone stamp tool and now I'm going to cl clone stamp this out from the top down. In this case, we have like a really nice clear sky. There's not, you know, anything really getting in the way of a, of a clone stamp job here. Um, in other words, like it's not, you know, there's not a whole lot of detail here. So you can just grab a big clone stamp brush and uh, just kind of paint this down. If you had, you know, if you had more detail up here, you could take care of this in, in many different ways. But right now, this is as, uh, as good of a job as we need to do. So that's what we're going to do. And it's going to look great. There we go. So clone stamping from the top down now. It's kind of getting rid of that tree line. There we go. Just something like that. And this is with a nice soft even brush. Nothing too special here. Now what we're going to do is because we have like a little bit too, like it's a little bit too well defined right there at the very top. What we're going to do on top of that, um, on top of that layer, we're going to create a new layer. And here in my clone stamp tool, you can also use the brush that we just created. So I'm going to go to our most recent brush, which should be the uh, Dirty Dirt brush. There we go. There's our Dirty Dirt brush. And um, now you can clone stamp with that brush. So if I just zoom in here, there we go, and I sample right down there, you can see I can start to paint up. And instead of just being, I'll just do it a little bit uh, higher so you can see what's going on. Instead of just being, uh, you know, basically like a soft edge brush, we're actually clone stamping with what looks like, you know, tiny pieces of dirt. And that's just going to add that level of detail that's going to make it look like, okay, maybe this was, you know, actually done. Um, maybe that actually is the, uh, the dirt line or whatever you have it. Um, if you want to do things like bring your scattering down, let's go to our brush and I'll bring my scattering down a little bit. It's just going to make these a little bit closer together. Um, that's just going to help so you don't have so much of a, so much of variation on there because it is relatively far away. All right, but this is going to really help out when it comes to like actually making this look real because instead of just looking like we have a soft edge brush there up at the very top, it's going to actually have that like nice variation. There we go. Pretty cool. And it's totally up to you, you know, how much time you spend on this and um, how much detail you want to put in there. I would recommend doing this, you know, relatively zoomed in just like I'm doing, but always make sure to check your work, um, zoom out and make sure it looks good, you know, zoomed out. And um, you can see that it adds quite a bit of variation there, what I did. Um, it just looks a little bit more real. Now, 
I'm going to put a little bit of a blur on this, and the reason is because it's far away. It's not going to be as in focus as what's, what's close. So we're just going to go to filter. I'm going to go to blur, and we're going to go to a motion blur. And I'm going to blur this straight left to the right at like a pretty low distance here. All right, like a distance of like one pixel. There we go, two pixels. And uh, we can see just that little bit of blur on there is just going to help it look like it's um, actually far away. There we go. Very nice. So we basically have our, um, our shape kind of coming in now, um, looking like it's completing our horizon, which is very cool. Now, the next thing I want to do, um, not a whole lot needs to be done from here. Uh, we're going to just brighten up this area a little bit, and I'm going to kind of create this area as a little bit of a light source. So we're going to go to curves, because this is not going to be in shadow, because there's no tree line here, right? It was in, there was a tree line there before. Um, doesn't exist now, so we're good. Um, I'm going to bring our red channel up a tiny bit, and then our blue channel down a little bit as well. And um, what this is going to do is it's not only going to brighten up that area, but it's going to warm it up as well. I'm going to hit Command I on my layer mask, and we're going to grab a gradient tool, and we're going to paint with our foreground to transparent gradient. That's right here. We're going to paint with our radial gradient, and I'm going to paint with white. So it's going to be, it's black right now, we're layer mask, and I'm going to click and drag here from the right to the left. There we go. And now we have, it's a lighter version, and it's also a little bit warmer, and that's coming in from the right to the left. We're going to do one more thing, and uh, that's just going to be colorize this. We're going to click on Hue Saturation. I'm going to click on this Colorize button, and we're going to lower our saturation and kind of give it you know, some of that warm, warm color there. All right, and here we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit Command-I, and now we're going to bring that in from the right to the left. And um, let's go ahead and go a little bit more. There we go. We're just going to lower our opacity. And what that does is it kind of it's going to take some of the blue out of our sky and make it almost look like we have like a really nice lens flare in there and uh, just kind of completes the look in general. So not like a whole lot of complex things going on here, but let's just uh, shift click and hit command G on those layers. That's going to group them all together and we'll just see our before and our after. So we got rid of that tree line. We kind of did a little bit of warping. We created a couple of custom brushes in the mix and then we did a little bit of coloring, which is just going to make the effect a lot more believable. And you want to make sure whatever you're doing with your light source, in this case, um, we have our shadow here on the left. So it's pretty easy to see that our light source is coming from the right. You know, uh, light over here, shadow over there. So you don't want to make this side of your image lighter necessarily. That's why we did the, did the right side of the image. And uh, I think it looks great. It didn't take a whole lot of time and it's a really good way to kind of like simplify a photo like this even more. And um, guys, I hope you learned a lot. That's the end of today's lesson. And uh, lesson sounds so official. <laughs> I hope you learned a lot. If you do anything like this, uh, kind of like working with a background, uh, doing like a before and after, please post it in a comment down below. I'd love to see your guys' before and after. Thanks so much, guys. And I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.